Cornelius Reginald Epi, and today I have a collection of cautionary tales that I'm going to share with you. It might be a shorter show than usual, but will make every second count. This first cautionary tale begins with a boy named Fred. Fred was a careless fellow. His mother always reprimanded him on how careless he was. He broke several dishes by age three. He was leaving his fingerprints everywhere when he would rob stuff. That's how careless he was. But our man Fred hadn't been careless enough to end himself. Then, one evening, Fred was at work. He was finishing mopping up. He took his bucket over to the mop sink and dumped it in. But Fred was a careless man, and he didn't care about a lot of things, like taxes, or who, what president it was, or who had right-of-way at a stop sign. So, Fred, of course, never, ever, ever cleaned out the drain. The drain in his mop sink, that is. That drain was so full of gross, grimy, uh, oatmeal and coffee grounds and, uh, disgusting things that, looking at it, would make Lady Liberty curdle. And so, Fred dumped this final bucket of mop water into the mop sink. And then he left for the night. But it was all too much for the poor mop sink. It was finally clogged. And not only was it clogged, but because of the collection of chemicals and organic matter, all of that junk that was in that sink, just floating around, began to react. Cells began dividing. Bonds became formed. Mitochondrias became powerhouses. And then out of the sink crawled the mop bucket sink creature. It was a disgusting mess of oatmeal and coffee grounds and other disgusting things, as stated before, and it crawled out on legs made of plastic forks that had somehow gotten mixed up in the mix. It looked around with its makeshift olive eyes, tasted with its tongue made of raw, discarded, probably infected with cooties meat. And then, it smelled it. A stench. A stench even worse than it. It was so smelly it made the creature, well, it made the creature smell a bad thing. And so, the creature decided to hunt down the, the source of this smell. It sniffed. It sniffed like a like a some weird demented oatmeal bloodhound sniffing around the restaurant. The trail led it out of the restaurant. The rest it, the trail led it away from the restaurant and across the highway and up a few mountains and down a few valleys. Eventually it arrived outside a door. It was Fred's door. The creature pushed open Fred's door, because Fred was too careless to shut it. The creature crawled through the house without making much noise, because Fred was too careless to break his boards. He crawled over to Fred's bed, but Fred wasn't there, because Fred was too careless to sleep on his bed. 
So the creature crawled over the, to the couch, and there was Fred. And the creature crawled over, crawled on top of Fred, opened its gaping maw, leaned in close, and licked Fred, and then immediately exploded into a million pieces. Fred, of course, was too careless to wake up. So the next morning when Fred woke up, he looked around and he saw his house as usual. Very, very dirty because he was too careless to clean it up. And then Fred drove carelessly to his job, carelessly served food, carelessly mopped up, and carelessly led the rest of his careless life until he found himself in a retirement home. So the moral of this cautionary tale is to live your life very carelessly or else the monster of your own creation might taste you and not blow up because you were too careless to wash yourself. I hope you folks are relaxed now with your beverage of favorite choice because tonight's next show is going to be a show. This next show is about a girl named Mary. Mary ran a business. Mary was a very successful entrepreneur. She had started up her own business at the very ripe old age of 12. Mary's business, of course, was in agriculture. She bought and sold sheep. Mary, however, was, how do you say, a little bit empty in her noggin? Despite being such a brilliant entrepreneur and a good agriculturalist, she was obsessed with the idea of cheating the government. <coughs> So, Mary lied on her W-2 form for years and years and years in a row. She would always submit false tax informations and get lower taxes, and no one was ever the wiser until one day one of her sheep, who happened to be a very good upstanding tax-paying citizen, looked in Mary's window and saw that she was falsifying information. So the sheep, whose name was Herbert, ran to the nearest town. He ran, he galloped, he trotted, he, he trotted, he tumbled, he hitchhiked for 14 long miles where he arrived at the city hall. The lady at the city hall's desk, whose name was Betty, listened to the lamb and said, Okay, lamb, you come with me. We will deal with this criminal. And so they hopped in a car. Then Betty drove to Mary's farm, looked in the window and saw Mary still falsifying information. So she grabbed a very large heavy stick and kicked the door down and said, Freeze, city hall. Mary, of course, was having none of this, and grabbed her piece, and then started firing upon the city hall lady. But the city hall lady was also having none of this, and chucked her very large bonkin stick across the room and hit Mary square in the noggin. And they took Mary to the hospital, but not because she was hurt, but because the hospital also served as a county jail. It was a very, very poor town. Largely because Mary hadn't been paying her taxes. So the moral of the story is, folks, pay your taxes, or else you'll get hit in the head with a very large stick. Tonight's final show is about a man named Cornelius. This man lived 
in a very big house, in a very big city, in a very big island, on a very big country, in a very big world, inside of a very big universe. And this man Cornelius was bored. Cornelius was not used to being bored. Cornelius usually had things to do, but Cornelius had run out of things to do. Usually there were chores, usually there was more chores, usually there was board games, but someone had come and taken all the chores and board games away from him. So Cornelius went to his mother and father and said, Ma and Pa, I need things to do. And they said, No, Cornelius, go away. We are noshing the guac. So Cornelius went away. He found a stick and turned it over. He felt accomplishment for a second. He felt happy. But after that, the imminent void of having nothing to do came back and hit him smack dab in the middle of his forehead. So Cornelius went back to his parents and said, Ma and Pa, I need something to do. And they said, Go away, Cornelius. We are noshing the guac. So Cornelius went away. And this time, he turned the stick back over and broke it in half and burned it. And it satiated him for a moment. But then that old desire, that carnal want to do stuff, came back and hit him with a right haymaker. So Cornelius went back to his Ma and Pa and said, Ma and Pa, this is ridiculous. If you don't give me something to do, I will have to be left to my own devices. But his Ma and Pa said, Cease your utterances, Cornelius, for we are consuming the plant that is green and tasty. So Cornelius was left to his own devices. And when Cornelius is left to his own devices, Cornelius goes mad. So Cornelius, since he was left to his own devices, ran into town, and then he ran out of town, but in a different direction. And then he ran up a hill, and down a hill, and up a hill, and down another hill, and up one more hill, and there at the top he found a house. A house with no one awake in it. So Cornelius, being left to his own devices, used his own devices to pick the lock. Then Cornelius used his own devices to crack the password, and Cornelius used his own devices to record this show. That's right, dear listener. The Cornelius you are hearing about, the handsome Cornelius, is me, and I am bored. If you have something for me to do, please tell me. The moral of the story is, give me something to do, or I will be left to my own devices. Well, dear listeners, I hope you have enjoyed my cautionary tales. I hope you can also join me again when I do this again, because I have used my own devices to make an imprint of a key, and as soon as I get home, I'm going to make a couple thousand copies. For now, this is Cornelius E.P. signing out. Ma and Pa, I need something to do. And they said, Go away, Cornelius. We are noshing the Glock.